This star is not just a massive ball of flaming gas, it's a diamond factory. They literally produce diamond. Such stars are stellar remnants, the burnt out cores of stars much like our sun, chilling out, quite literally, in the vast expanse of the cosmos. They're called white dwarf stars. It's a white dwarf, it's the compressed heart of a star. Now you might be thinking, but I want my stars hot and fiery. And sure, a star in its prime is indeed a sight to behold. But there's something equally cool about white dwarfs. Apart from their temperature dropping down to a balmy few thousand degrees over billions of years. You see, these space snowflakes aren't just cooling down, they're transforming. They're like the Cinderella's of the cosmos, except instead of turning into a princess at midnight, they're turning into diamond disco balls. Stars like our sun spend most of their lives fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. It's a high pressure, high temperature gig, but it keeps them shining for billions of years. Once the hydrogen runs out, they start burning helium, puffing up into a red giant. This is when they can't hold their lunch anymore and start throwing out their outer layers. What's left after this celestial weight loss program is a dense core, mostly made up of carbon and oxygen, about the size of the Earth. This core, now called a white dwarf, is incredibly dense. If you were able to scoop up a teaspoon of a white dwarf's material, the mass would be about five and a half tons, or roughly the same as an elephant. Before I continue editing this video, I just wanted to let you know that we have launched our merch. If you want to get one of these, make sure you visit the link in the description below. Now, here's where things get sparkly. Over billions of years, as the white dwarf cools, the carbon atoms start to arrange themselves into a crystalline structure. And what do you get when you pack carbon atoms into a crystal lattice under massive pressure? You get a diamond. Where is the diamond? But the diamond inside a white dwarf isn't like what you might imagine when you think of a diamond. It's not a gigantic, multifaceted gem shimmering with an internal fire. In fact, it doesn't resemble earthly diamonds at all. The diamond in a white dwarf refers to the crystalline structure of the carbon and oxygen atoms that make up much of the white dwarf's core. However, the diamond in a white dwarf isn't something we would be able to see, at least not in the traditional sense. It's buried beneath the star's outer layers, and it's not clear and transparent like earthly diamonds. Instead, it would likely be more similar to metal in appearance due to the presence of other elements, such as oxygen, mixed in with the carbon. As for size, the diamond core would be a significant portion of the white dwarf itself. Considering a typical white dwarf is about the size of Earth, the diamond core could be thousands of miles in diameter. One superstar, or rather super dwarf, that has our scientific community buzzing is this buddy right here, called BPM 37093, also known as Lucy, after the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Now, Lucy is not your average run-of-the-mill white dwarf. She's a crystal queen, hiding a gigantic diamond in her heart. And we're not talking a few carrots here, folks. We're talking about a cool 10 billion trillion trillion carrots. That's a one followed by 34 zeros. Try fitting that on a ring. The diamond core of Lucy is estimated to be about 3,000 kilometers, roughly 1,864 miles in diameter. This star is approximately 50 light years away in the constellation Centaurus. This giant space diamond is actually the crystallized carbon and oxygen at the core of this cooled white dwarf. Lucy is like the Hope Diamond of the Milky Way, with a mass roughly 1.1 times that of our Sun. So when you propose to your sweetheart with a diamond ring, you're basically saying, my love for you is as constant and enduring as a dead star's core. How romantic. But how on Earth, or should I say how in space, do we know that there's diamond in there? Is there some sort of galactic geologist poking around these stars with a jeweler's loop? Well, not exactly, but the truth isn't far off. The story of how scientists discovered diamond and white dwarfs is a fascinating tale of astronomy, physics, and a whole lot of smart thinking. It's like a cosmic detective story, but with a glittering twist. The key to uncovering the diamond secret of white dwarfs lies in the field of astroseismology. Yes, that's a real word. 
but it's also an incredibly cool branch of astronomy that studies the internal structure of stars by interpreting their frequency spectra. Think of it as the cosmic version of seismology, which uses earthquakes to explore the Earth's interior. Stars aren't just balls of gas, they're vibrating bodies that emit different frequencies. These vibrations, or starquakes if you will, can tell us a lot about a star's internal structure, much like how a musical instrument's sound can reveal its shape and material. The case of BPM 37093, our friend Lucy, is a great example of astroseismology in action. Back in the early 2000s, astronomers used the science of starquakes to probe Lucy's interior. They noticed something interesting. The frequency suggested that Lucy's core was not just a lump of carbon and oxygen, but a crystallized structure. And what do you get when you compress carbon under extreme pressure and temperature, then let it cool down over billions of years? You guessed it. Diamond. Astroseismology isn't just about finding space diamonds, though. By studying the vibrations of stars, scientists can learn more about their mass, temperature, age, and even their future evolution. This can give us key insights into the life cycle of stars and the formation of the universe itself. So while the diamonds are definitely a sparkling bonus, the real treasure lies in the knowledge we gain. Is it even feasible to get to these dazzling stars? Could our future generations end up mining these celestial bodies for diamonds? The reality, I'm afraid, is not so sparkling. These diamond stars are incredibly far away. Even at the speed of light, it would take years, decades, or even centuries to reach them. Plus, dealing with extreme conditions like gravity a hundred thousand times stronger than Earth's could prove to be a bit of a challenge. It's kind of like trying to walk your pet elephant on a tightrope. Possible in cartoons, not so much in reality. And even if you got there, trying to mine a white dwarf would be like trying to scoop up the ocean with a tea strainer. It's just not going to happen, my friend. However, don't let this discourage you. Even if we can't physically touch these diamond stars, studying them has enormous scientific value. So next time you're looking up at the night sky, remember, you're not just seeing balls of gas and dust, you're seeing potential gemstones. Makes you think about space in a whole new light, doesn't it? So there you have it, a journey through the cosmos, looking for a little bit of sparkle. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic ride, folks. If you've enjoyed the trip, remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. As Carl Sagan once said, somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Who knows what we'll discover next in this amazing, diamond-studded universe of ours. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.